What's up, everybody? This is Easy, Easy Street Gaming, bringing you a Clash Royale video. Got a deck comparison. Got the new Royal Ghost card. <clears throat> Any, anyone who has it already, you, you have a huge advantage over everyone else. It's kind of like when you, if you were one of the ones that got the Mega Knight, you know, there was that two or three week period before everyone else started really getting it. And you had a huge, plus they weren't nerfed yet, you had a huge advantage. This card is still really way overpowered. So I've got two different decks that I was using with it. Was able to get. I was right at the beginning of the this Electro League, and I was able to get all the way to. I think I got up 400, maybe 450, maybe 500. I think at one point, uh, won nine straight in the in the the big challenge. Won ten straight in the little challenge, and this is all me. I, I'm not very good. So. Uh, gonna go over the two different decks the all the features of them why I use the different cards that I used I know it's kind of a long video but uh, try to keep everyone entertained for anyone who, who actually has the patience to sit through more than 10 minutes of video <laughs> so uh, this has not not only both these decks actually have the same have a couple of the same cards I use freeze in both of them I use the ghost in both of them and I use the infernal dragon in both of them this first deck it has the Goblin Hut. Goblin Hut's in, definitely in the meta right now. Uh, it, we, I use it for a distraction. Plus, I, I think one of the reasons why everyone's using it right now is that if it's not engaged with other troops, it always manages to get at least one shot off on a tower. So if they don't take it out, you're talking about 10 shots on the tower. So about 400 chip damage on the tower. So that's pretty significant for just one troop or one or or, or one uh, card to put in. Now you saw right there. That there's the elite barbarians, using them as as power control. I've been using them on all the mid range cards like uh, wizard, uh, electro wizard, uh, Valkyrie, all all the all the melee cards that can give you a hard time. I use the Infernal Dragon for defense on the big cards like Pekka, like Gollum, like Mega Knight. Also, I use the Freeze with the Infernal Dragon. And if you time this right, the Freeze is just a deadly part of this deck. Matter of fact, deadly part of both decks. Uh, one of the keys to winning with this deck is to use both lanes as much as possible. Now. I know that sometimes you end up losing because you get both sides down real low but you don't take out either tower so you have to be real careful for that so you use the miner to turn around the turn the tower around uh, to get the strikes in also you use the the spear goblin not the spear goblin the uh, the dark goblin the same way you're gonna use a dark goblin to get a couple of quick chips in and then you use the miner to turn them around and get a, just a little extra damage in for whichever card you're trying to put in if you time it right you can use the miner and the ghost and the ghost can actually get in several shots unless they play unless they're real smart and play something on you that's gonna stop the ghost before it gets to the tower so uh, we'll go through a little play-by-play -play in the next couple of the next couple of, of battles I just basically I recorded for an hour yesterday and I, I took about half of them and uh, put them on this video all but one were, were wins believe it or not so uh, which is rare for me usually when I record anything I lose consistently <laughs> now you and you'll see that I'm not a perfect player I make plenty of mistakes learning if you've been watching any of my videos uh, I'm, I'm learning the learning curve for me is not the greatest I guess <laughs> so there's a few things that you don't want to do that I do don't put the cards down on the bridge as much as I do try to play everything behind your towers or right in the middle somewhere in the middle either up front or in back depending on on how well you time everything so here you see I, I end up letting them take the right tower and now that they had a good push going but I had enough cards to stop them so now I already know I've got the left tower. I'm going to poison it. I already know it's gone. So I'm going to put the miner in. The miner's just going to basically tank for whatever else I put in. End up putting in another infernal dragon. Going to use the freeze to freeze up the tower. And that was it on this. That... 
what, I, what I'm really trying to do is take out one of the towers and then I'll really start pressing them much harder uh, I'll stop playing defense quite quite so much and I'll start pressing on both sides and then I'll try to freeze both towers at one time and if I can freeze both towers at one time with the elite barbarians going down one side and the infernal dragon and the ghost going down the other side that's that's a, that's a hard combination to stop and I had a lot of really talkative players and this was up towards the top I, I believe it's up towards the top side of, of Electro which which believe it or not gets real tough on the t for, uh, for me at least I don't know why the beginning and the middles of these uh, of these leagues are a lot harder than the very end most of the time maybe it's because I'm adapted to them but this guy here he had the Infernal Dragon and he also had the, the Mega Knight which Mega Knight's honestly it's not that hard for me to defend it's not I don't know why but Peck is a lot harder for me to defend one of the things I don't like defending is against Pekka or Gollum. They just they take so much of my attention. It's hard for me to, to focus on what I'm trying to do. Um, oh, also, didn't have anything to stop the the mass troops. You know, didn't have log, didn't have arrows, didn't have not even you know, didn't have anything except poison. So I'm using poison more for defense than anything else. I a lot of times I. Really, what I'd like to do is put in the miner and put in poison at the same time, and that kind of gets their their mindset that I'm gonna I'm going for chip damage and I'm gonna get every little bit that I can. And here you see me go down both lanes again, and you want to do that as much as possible. You want to switch lane switch lanes, and oh, something else though, as far as the freeze goes, there's always that one card. That you want to kind of hold off on and a lot of people hold off on uh, on the missile whatever that, whatever it is they'll get you down under 500 and then uh, last second they'll end up they'll, they'll hit you long range and no way to stop it of course so freeze is one of those is one of those cards that I try to hold off on it if I can uh, especially if I'm able to slowly chip away at them and it's looking like I'll be able to freeze the last minute and be able to win with the freeze because they don't know you have it now a lot of people are counting your cards and if you're not using one or two of your cards they're gonna know you're saving something and freeze is one of those cards that I, I don't know I, I don't have a lot of people wait and use it kind of last minute on me so it kind of surprises people when you freeze them last second and and, um, and go in for the kill with it but it's really effective, especially with the Infernal Dragon. I found that with the Infernal Dragon, if they, especially if they have the Electro Wizard, what they'll do is they know they have the Electro Wizard. They know they can counter the Infernal Dragon at any time with the Electro Wizard and pretty much uh, reset him every time the Electro Wizard hits him. So they're going to use the Electro Wizard to play defense on their tower against the, the Infernal Dragon. So play the Infernal Dragon solo on the tower. And as soon as he drops in the Electro Wizard, then you put the freeze down on the Electro Wizard and the tower. And usually the Infernal Dragon will be able to take the Electro Wizard and the tower. If he doesn't know he has it, you, you have it. And, and, and have another card waiting right away, you know. <clears throat> so this guy here, he's got another similar, a couple similar cards. He's got the Elite Barbarians too. Now, Elite Barbarians is another one that, that's... A very very powerful card especially if you can freeze the, the the tower only problem is you have to be careful against things like uh, the Mega Knight and against Valkyrie against the wizard they'll all hit, hit both elite barbarians at one time so you have to be careful about that you don't you don't want to put them in there and there are six cards so you're, you have to invest six every time you put them down so what I'll try to do is I'll try to set up for them by putting in uh, Another card to try to draw out some of their bigger cards so I see exactly what they have uh, And if they drop down their big card like the Pekka or like Gollum uh, I'll, I'll play them in the opposite lane Quite often because I have the infernal dragon that I've actually have kind of dedicated towards those big cards to play defense on them. And you can also tell that I use a computer I mean I'm using blue stacks in a computer so you can see my mouse going crazy 
And uh, if you ever see the mouse uh, this in one spot flickering on and off, that's me trying to put a card in when I don't have enough elixir. Getting better at that. Now, something else. You have to be careful playing the, uh, the ghost on defense. So if you have the ghost and they put in uh, minions, for example. Yeah, so you have a minion horde going towards your tower. You can't play defense with the ghost. They won't. He won't be attracted to them. They won't be attracted to them. He'll walk right under them. They'll go right over over the ghost to the tower. I actually lost. I actually lost the game because of that. Because I just wasn't thinking for that one second. Put the ghost in. He walked right by him. They took the tower, and that was it. <laughs> and here's another example. I didn't really. I don't really have anything that can overpower these big horde cards. And I put in the poison, which I was okay with. But that I lost the elite barbarians to uh, to to scar me, so that's a, that's a big advantage for for the opponent when it, they can put in a three scar me and you lose the elite barbarians, which is a six. And here here the what I'm trying to do. I already had I already had a tower advantage on him. I was trying to freeze. Trying to freeze him with enough time for the Inferno Dragon to, to be able to take out the troops and the tower. The tower was down to like 600. Now, it takes, I think, 4 seconds or 5 seconds for it to, to heat up all the way. So that's a long time. Also, the timing is really important. My timing with the Miner is not very good. Uh, I've played against good players that just managed to get the, the Miner time, timing down really well. You want to play the miner to where the, the princess tower turns around and starts shooting at the miner, and if the player is kind of jumpy, they'll put they'll put a troop in behind the, the princess tower to take care of the miner. Miner's not going to do a lot of damage, and most people know that it's kind of a setup for whatever's coming next, so they'll wait to see what's coming next. But if you're playing against someone that that reacts to the miner, then don't do it on the first the first go round. But now you know the next go around, and this guy has clone, and I managed to, to combat clone with poison really well in this match right here. Clone, uh, clone and minions can be deadly, especially if they have rage too. So if you ha so if you use poison, don't use it on offense at all. Use it on your own towers, and, and use it as the minions are coming towards them. That way they can't put the clone spell and the, and the rage on minions. They can take a tower in like two seconds with that. So there's some more chip damage from the, the Dark Goblin. And now, now at this point, you'll see how I'm, I'm going to start applying a lot of pressure to both sides. And the Ghost, it does, it does splash damage. So if they put in, um, if they use a Skeleton Barrel and they put all three, oh, Skeleton Barrel, a, um, a Goblin Barrel, and they put all three Goblins behind your Princess Tower, you can actually put the ghost in. He'll take out all three at one time. And now, see here. Here, I'm trying to play. I don't think it worked out that time. Trying to play the infernal dragon on one side, the elite barbarians on one side. There's the rage. There's the clone right into the poison. Didn't work. He's been bitching about this the whole match. Now I think one or two shots from mine is going to take the tower down. And that was it. Oh, 30 seconds left. This guy did nothing but jaw me the whole match. You don't see it, but he's a level eight. I'm a level 12. That was I. He just wouldn't stop after that, so I just quit. Uh, yeah, he was an eight, and I was a 12, and I'm a 12. So you have to be careful too. If you see these people that are really have a real low level, that doesn't mean they don't know how to play. There's a reason why they're all the way up against you if you're a 12 or a 13. Okay, so here's the second deck. This deck right here was definitely in the meta for a little while. This is the Go Gollum and the Night Witch. But now with with it, I, for a while what I was using was Gollum, Night Witch, the Baby Dragon, and Mega Minion. Took out Baby Dragon and put in the Infernal Dragon instead. And I made that switch, and it's and it actually really paid off for me. 
and, and reason is like right there. I just took out half the tower. They didn't have they didn't have anything to play on the on the Infernal Dragon right away. And one of my suggestions is if you're using Gollum, to make sure you have Log too, because again you don't want them to put in Skarmy. Even though he'll he'll end up killing them when he when they when he breaks them in half, they can take them out pretty quick. Now, I play this deck a lot differently than I do the, the first one. I don't use both lanes nearly as much as I do in the first deck. What I do is I try to overpower them in one lane. And what, what most people will do, because Gollum doesn't do that much DPS, is they'll let Gollum go by and then they'll isolate whatever troops behind Gollum. A lot of times they'll put a, a miner in behind the, behind the line and whatever troops behind Gollum will turn around so you have to be mindful of how close you put in whatever troops are behind Gollum but at that point I'm trying to overload everything down one lane now if I was using the other deck I'd already be going down the other lane with this and uh, all of these cards are high punish cards I mean Mega Minion does like 250 damage uh, per hit or something like that I'm not really sure And there you can see one of the little disadvantages for for the ghost is that he doesn't attract the cards right away So they are they are gonna come in and get the first hit but a freeze don't use it on defense that much That was the end of that uh, Don't use it on defense that much believe it or not, but it's a great defensive card, too You know um, the elite barbarians they can take out a tower I think it takes about four seconds if, if you leave them on a pose on tower so um, freeze ends up freeze is I think a three second Maybe three and a half seconds. I don't. I, I forget. Depends on the level, but uh, it really it, it can really stop a big push. What you have to be careful of with freeze is if you have no, if you have it's a it's a four card, right? So it's a pretty expensive spell. And if you only have four elixir and you put freeze in, all that you're doing is hurting yourself because what you're doing is you've frozen everything. Yes, your princess tower is knock is beaten down one of the one of the troops that are in there But they are getting more time to put something else in and you're just building up time to put in a card You have to really have seven or eight elixir to use freeze on defense and You have to be able to put it in the second card right away So it can immediately start doing damage on whatever's frozen and then when they become unfrozen You have something there that they might switch targeting on Now the the ghost it doesn't have really high hit points. It it probably has, you know. I normally I try to figure this out before I do the video. <laughs> I know it takes everything several shots to take it out, but it's not one of those real st stout uh, troops. But it does do high damage, and it and it is invisible up until a troop, run, in, until it runs into a ground based troop. And here here's another great example of using freeze. Had Sparky on on Gollum, so we froze Sparky. Now he's gonna gonna end up splitting Sparky once other troops are around it. No, oh, Sparky's gonna split Gollum once other troops are around it. <laughs> and I've noticed that I've seen a lot more Sparky lately. I think um, I, I it was I think it was Clash with Ash that had a really good Sparky deck. Ever since that, man, he's got a lot of people that use the decks that he shows on his channel. I've seen them all over the place. So. Okay, so I know they have Sparky, so I'm pretty much designated uh, Freeze right for Sparky. Now keep in mind, this deck is not a uh, it's not a fast-paced deck, so you really have to be you have to try to be as patient as you can with it. I know I hear people say that about a lot of decks: be patient with it, be patient with it. But you really you have to be patient with these decks because if you're not, you'll never get to play Gollum. And if you're patient with it and you just let your tr you put your troops in and let them engage and see what they do and once they are done running their running their course then put in another troop and actually let these troops run their course and if you do that you're gonna have a lot more success than if you're just constantly loading troops in it's a mistake that I made a lot in the past something else I've, I've heard a lot of good players talk about how they use Gollum and when they use the Gollum Night Witch deck they won't use Gollum until the one minute mark 
and basically wait till double elixir time. And it's kind of like their big surprise. They drop Gollum in, and now now their opponent knows they have Gollum. Uh, they may use other cards in combination with the Night Witch to make them think that they're using that particular combination as their strength. And then they then all of a sudden come the one minute mark, uh, Gollum comes in, and you're not used to playing with them. You don't know their exact style, so it's a it's a it's a pretty big intimidation factor among just being hard to stop Gollum anyway. But those are how the pros play it. If you're not a pro, which most of us aren't. I would suggest if you see if you, if you have them when you first get your deck, put them in there first, <laughs> put them in there right away, and and wait wait for them to get all the way to the bridge. Wait for your elixir to build back up. If they if they play a, a big horde of troops on them, especially minions because minions can take them out real quick. Um, react to that. Other than that, just just wait until he hit, hits the bridge, and. Give yourself a little bit of space at first to see how they're going to react to the other troops. You, the first go around with Gollum, you're probably not going to take out the, the tower in the first the first try with them. So you want to see how you how the player is going to play against them. You know, Gollum's not not a rare card with a lot of players. A lot of players use them. A lot of players have a lot of success with them, and a lot of players know how to defend against it. So you, you're going to have to see how how they're going to try to play against Gollum. Uh, one of the hardest things you're going to face against the Golem deck is going to be the Inferno Tower. And that's another, another good way to use the Freeze. Just be mindful, you don't want to just freeze the Inferno Tower. You want to freeze the Inferno Tower, the troops, and the Princess Tower all at once. So put in, a, put in another troop in, in a manner that it's going to kind of instigate them to put another troop in. Oh, there, there it goes. Use the clone spell in the left lane, but the princess in the right lane. This is a really dangerous area for me right here. Managed to get out of that without too much damage. They end up taking this left tower. And end up taking the left tower with the witch, and now they have a big push coming. I have no idea how I escaped this alive. They use the rage and the witches. Now normally this is where I would go down. <laughs> but meanwhile, they didn't stop the infernal dragon on the right side. I ended up taking them out with the Inferno Dragon on the right side. They were just overconfident. They knew they were going to take the main tower. And they had been... Oh. I don't know who added that trash talk in the video. That could not have been me in the actual battle. So we have finally gotten to the last match of the video. I know you're figuring... If you're still here. Thinking, finally. <laughs> I know it's kind of long, but have a bunch of different... Try to use the card in a bunch of different ways, or the decks in a bunch of different ways. And uh, so, if you're trying to learn these decks or trying to learn these cards, hopefully, it was a you're able to see something or, or learn something, or maybe what not to do. I know I can at least do that for you. So, th this person here is using a very similar deck that I was using. And you, you see my expert play through the log down. Oh, I did get her. <laughs> I thought I missed princess in that one. Whenever you see someone that has a princess and you have the log, that's a really good idea to kind of gun for her with it. Because, especially if you're getting double elixir time, they can start putting in multiple princesses and it's hard to stop her. I don't, I don't know why um, I end up getting in trouble with her if, I, if I'm not careful. So a lot of times I'll dedicate the log to her every time. And they use her as a sniper too, just like I'll use the, the dark goblin. So now here I have a lane open, trying to get Gollum out there. <laughs> got Gollum going down the right lane, and I'm and I believe what I want to do is I, I want to try to get the Infernal Dragon going down the left lane, but I'm going to end up putting it down the right lane. And he had bats; he had the Infernal Dragon as well. Bats are not the Infernal Dragon's friend. So able to take his Infernal Dragon with mine, miss the princess. I mean, look at that. I know I got her. So, he ends up putting in a goblin barrel. End up logging the goblin barrel. Leaving the princess up. Here comes the ghost. I think the, go the ghost one-shots the princess. Yeah, he does. Disappears from the infernal dragon. Which turns the infernal dragon around. And there I use the log on nothing. 
And he's got kind of an odd odd army. He's got a couple of uh, smaller uh, cards that he's using together. Ends up getting the Infernal Dragon on my tower. Took him out. He bombs me. Gets down to 31. That pisses me off when I do that. Got the Infernal Dragon going down the right lane. Had the Ghost on the left lane. He's crying. He's happy. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Try to make good videos for everyone. Don't just throw them together. So if you like the video, throw me a like. Sub to the channel guys. Got a lot of Clash of Clans stuff. Trying to add a lot more Clash Royal this year. So enjoyed making it. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Till next time. It's been easy. Take care.